Hi guys, in this mini lecture we are going to talk about a very important class of chemical reactions known as so-called acid-base chemistry. Now an acid-base reaction is a reaction in which a hydrogen ion, H+, is transferred from one chemical species to another. Now we're going to go into more detail um, with a number of examples, but before we get into this, the specifics of the chemistry, I want to give you guys an example from your everyday experience. We all know that the digestion process that occurs after we consume food is aided by stomach acid. Acid, it turns out it's hydrochloric acid, present in the lumen of our stomachs actually helps us digest our food, right? And so let's take a closer look at how that actually happens. So this hydrochloric acid that's secreted by parietal cells lining our stomach um, basically transfer protons, transfer these hydrogen ions to all of the food that is present in our stomachs. And so, for example, if you ingest a protein, like you, you, know, you eat a piece of hamburger, for example, then you've got a bunch of these little protein molecules hanging out in the lumen of your stomach. And they look like this, right? Protein molecules, you know, come in a lot of different shapes and forms, but they're, they have an ordered structure to them. All these different secondary, tertiary structural elements, and we'll talk about all those details later on in the course, uh, suffice it to say you get this well-ordered structure that looks something like this. And it turns out that it's relatively challenging for enzymes or digestive enzymes to get in there and break apart this folded protein in order to absorb it. But if we introduce an acid and put protons you know, stuck onto that folded protein, what ends up happening is this denaturation process which basically unfolds all of those little sheets and helices that are formed in that folded protein, giving an unfolded protein that enzymes can then readily start to break down. Now, of course, under certain conditions, this stomach acid can actually start causing us some problems. So, you know, there's a variety of things that can cause it, uh, but heartburn is a situation where you basically can start to have uh, stomach acid going up from the stomach up in through that esophagus and your esophagus does not have a thick enough mucous membrane uh, to protect itself from that acid so you will start to feel sometimes rather extreme pain. And so if you're suffering from heartburn the go-to over-the-counter remedy is to take what we call an antacid, right? And an antacid is a basic compound, in this case, magnesium hydroxide for the uh, uh, milk of magnesia, um, that will then react with that HCl. And what it does is that hydrogen on that HCl will preferentially jump onto that OH- from the magnesium hydroxide and form harmless water and magnesium chloride salt. So you basically take that stomach acid and turn it into salt water and therefore remove that uh, you know, negative feelings associated with heartburn. Okay? And it turns out that this example here really hits right at the core of what acid-base chemistry is all about. And so let's go ahead and introduce some specific definitions and explore this chemical reaction equation in a little bit more detail. So an acid is going to be defined as any substance that produces H plus in solution. Now, as you go on in your studies, you will be introduced to other possible definitions of acids that are useful in a variety of contexts. Um, what we are going to be following for this course is a so-called Arrhenius definition, and it's simply put anything that con contributes an H plus or H3O plus, as it's oftentimes actually found experimentally in solution, um, is going to be classified as an acid. So to see an example, uh, you know, a breakdown of the chemical reactions involved here, you know, you, we look at our example of HCl. HCl, when you place HCl in an aqueous solution, what you end up getting is H plus ions and Cl minus ions, right? And the fact that you get these H plus ions satisfies our definition of an acid that we just saw above, right? Now, when those H plus ions are actually in water, they typically don't hang out just as isolated H plus ions. They will actually form a H3O plus 
so-called hydronium ion, by reacting with a molecule of water. And so an alternate way of expressing equation one up here is by reacting that acid and explicitly including that water molecule as a reactant and then coming up with a balanced chemical reaction equation that shows the presence of that hydronium ion. Now one and two, equations one and two here are conveying the exact same information and are oftentimes used interchangeably. And similarly, um, the, even the representation of the proton as either an H plus or a hydronium ion um, is, are, are both commonly seen you know, in the literature and are once again used interchangeably. All right, so remember the acid produces an H plus in solution. So now the definition of a base is a substance that produces OH minus ions in solution. Okay, so if we go back to our magnesium hydroxide example, if you have an aqueous solution of magnesium hydroxide, what you're really looking at is a solution that contains Mg2 plus ions and hydroxide anions floating around. Okay, and so if you take H plus ions and add to them OH minus ions, you will of course end up with water, right? Our good old friend H2O, okay? And this is the definition of a so-called neutralization reaction, okay? And this neutralization reaction, uh, the reaction, the formation of water from hydroxide and, pro and a proton um, is sort of the hallmark of an acid-base reaction. When you add an acid that contributes H+, a base contributes OH-, this neutralization process is the chemical reaction that results, okay? And that is that reaction that results in our initial example that alleviates that pain associated with heartburn by neutralizing that acid with the presence of this magnesium hydroxide base and forming water and our salt. Okay, so in this way, we now have a method of identifying acid-base reactions. So basically, you need to determine whether or not a proton transfer has occurred. All right. And the compound that lost the proton is the acid. The compound that gained the proton is a base. And for the purposes of this class, the product, products really of the acid-base reaction will be water, liquid water, and some ionic compound or a salt. So for our purposes, acid-base reactions will result in the formation of salt water. And you can look at a couple examples of this. Uh, HBr, reaction with sodium hydroxide, getting uh, sodium bromide salt and water. All right. Acetic acid, reacting with our potassium hydroxide, gives us water and a potassium acid, uh, acetate salt. All right. Nitric acid, lithium hydroxide, coming together to form water and a lithium nitrate salt. Okay. So salt water is our product. So to sum up this discussion here, it's important for you guys to be familiar with a handful of the common acids and bases that you will just see time and time again in chemistry and biochemistry. Right? And so I've tried to summarize you know, the most important set of these guys um, here on these, uh, this table. Um, the first, the top table gives us a list of strong acids and bases. Uh, the first set over here, the first column is giving us a handful of different acids and their associated chemical formula. Note that in each one of these examples, you see a proton illustrated in orange here. And these are the acidic protons that end up leaving if you place one of these strong acids in solution. And the definition of a strong acid is simply an acid that will completely, or for all practical purposes, completely dissociate into its respective ions. So for example, HCl would completely dissociate into H plus and Cl minus, okay? Similarly, the bases over here on the right-hand side, okay, are compounds that give rise to either an OH minus directly or indirectly in the case of ammonia that we'll talk about here in a second. And so strong acids and bases, just like uh, you know, we previously discussed here, are going to be compounds that completely dissociate. So a strong base 
sodium hydroxide will completely dissociate into Na plus and OH minus. Now, this last example here, ammonia, this is an example of a chemical reaction where that ammonium doesn't contain OH minus directly. However, if ammonia is placed in liquid water, then you end up forming a ammonium ion and OH minus as a result. Okay, so in this way, so uh, ammonium is a basic compound in the sense that as long as water is around, it will end up producing hydroxide ions. Now there's also a couple so-called weak acids I want you guys to be familiar with. Uh, hydrofluoric acid, formic acid, acetic acid, you know, one of the characteristic uh, tastes and flavors in, uh, in vinegar. Um, these compounds are weak acids because yes, they do have protons, shown in orange here, that will dissociate and increase the proton concentration in solution. However, weak acids do not completely dissociate, okay? So strong acids and bases do completely dissociate. Weak acids do not completely dissociate, okay? So remember that, do not completely dissociate.